Hi everybody, I'm back. I'm Menopause Barbie and we're doing Menopause Your Management Your Way now and for the rest of your life. Now today we're going to pick up exactly where we left off last time. This is tutorial number 26 and if you're following along in the book today we're covering pages 110 to 115. If you're following along in the outline notes we're still on page 26. We're spending a lot of time on page 26. <laughs> it's an important page. And what we're going to do today is continue with our discussion on phytoestrogens. Now, if you haven't watched the tutorial that precedes this one, watch it first and then come back to this one. Please, please believe me on this. <laughs> it, it'll be critical to your understanding of the tutorial that we have today. Test yourself. See if you can answer this quiz question. And if you can't, just stop the video, watch the one before it, which is tutorial number 25, and then come back to this one. Okay, so here's your question. Phytoestrogens, A, are stronger than human estrogen. B, are more strongly attracted to estrogen receptor sites than human estrogen. C, are custom estrogens that you get only from a compounding pharmacy. D, None of the above, E, A, and B above. I sure hope you chose D, which is none of the above. And if you didn't, you really aren't ready to watch this tutorial, so you should go back and review the previous one. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of review. In the last tutorial, you learned that hormone molecules bind to receptor sites. So this is a hormone molecule, a human hormone molecule, and these areas where anything can attach are called receptor sites. And which hormone binds to a receptor site depends on something called affinity. Affinity is the degree of attraction between the receptor site and the hormone molecule. So here you see high affinity right there for a human estrogen molecule, and you see low affinity here for the phytoestrogen molecule. What you see here is you see the human molecule and you see a molecule of human estrogen and you see that it has high affinity. So these two are very attracted to each other. Down here, you see a phytoestrogen molecule, and you see that its affinity is low. So the phytoestrogen molecule is not as attracted to the human molecule as, the, as this molecule is. So there's a huge difference in how attracted these two things are to the molecules in your body, okay? So affinity can be high or low. After that, I taught you that the affinity of a phytoestrogen for an estrogen receptor site is only 1 1500th to 1 11,000th as great as that of your body's natural estrogen. So here's a receptor site. This is, this is, a, this is where spaces can attach, where, where hormones can attach to a molecule. Here you have a human estrogen. Let's just call it, let's just say that its affinity, its level of attraction is one. And compare that level of attraction that's one to the level of attraction that a phytoestrogen has. The phytoestrogen's attraction is only one fifteen hundredth to one eleven thousandth as strong as the human estrogen. So the estrogen you used to have in your body was much more likely to bind to a receptor site than a phytoestrogen. Then you learned that the strength of phytoestrogen is much lower than the strength of human estrogen or pharmaceutical estrogen. You learned that if we call the strength of human or pharmaceutical estrogen one, that compared to that strength of one, phytoestrogens are only one one hundredth or one one thousandth as strong. So your human, your, your body's 
estrogen and pharmaceutical estrogen is 100 to 1,000 times stronger than a phytoestrogen. Now, I told you that this is important because of all the hype and misinformation surrounding the ingestion of phytoestrogens. For instance, it's not uncommon to go to a health food establishment, maybe a vegan or a vegetarian restaurant, where they don't serve tofu or other products that contain estrogen because they believe that they're dangerous. Some people believe that ingesting phytoestrogens is dangerous because it constitutes an overdose of estrogen. And they have all kinds of justifications and fears about what can happen. Then there's this other group that believes that phytoestrogens are safe because they're weaker than the pharmaceutical types of estrogen. So today I'm going to give you the facts about phytoestrogens so that you can decide for yourself if they're dangerous or not. You see, I'm completely unbiased and I just want you to know the facts, okay? So, the truth is that phytoestrogens are unique <laughs> in the way they exert their effects. So, rather than acting on estrogen receptors in exactly the same way that your human estrogen does, phytoestrogens are more flexible in the result that they can produce. So, in short, phytoestrogens can either raise or lower your estrogen levels. Now, I know, I know, you're probably thinking, Menopause Barbie, would you please make up your mind and stop being so wishy-washy? Well, I, I can't help it. I mean, when a phytoestrogen raises your estrogen level, we have terms to describe that. We call an elevation of your estrogen level as positive or enhancing or estrogenic. I mean, it's estrogen, so we call it estrogenic. We call that a positive enhancing or estrogenic effect. Okay, in other words, anytime a phytoestrogen causes your estrogen levels to rise, we call it a positive enhancing or estrogenic effect. And they all mean the same thing, but they don't mean good. It's just a description of the change in your estrogen level. It's a positive change to a higher level. It's an enhancing change. It's a more estrogenic change because there's more estrogen. When, an estro when a phytoestrogen lowers your estrogen level, we call it a negative or a diminishing or an anti-estrogenic effect. So again, these are words that we use to describe a change in your estrogen level. They all mean the same thing, they don't mean bad. It's just saying that if your estrogen level gets lower, it's a negative change. It's a diminishing change. It's an anti-estrogenic change. In other words, against estrogen, meaning it lowers the estrogen level. Now it really does sound like phytoestrogens have a hard time making up their minds, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, as women we can totally relate, can't we? Because we all have the right to change our minds about anything, don't we? <laughs> okay, but there's a catch. The phytoestrogen does not get to decide whether it has a positive or a negative effect on your estrogen levels. That depends on how much estrogen is already circulating around in your body. If your estrogen level is low, a phytoestrogen will raise it. It's a positive effect. If your estrogen level is high, phytoestrogens lower it, and that's a negative effect. So it's time for some examples. We're going to remove these review puzzles and I'm going to give you some new puzzle pieces to look at. Okay, we're going to start with a puzzle piece that represents an estrogen receptor. So these are molecules in your body and they have spaces on them where they can attach to an estrogen 
hormone molecule. So estrogen hormones can attach to this puzzle piece. Now, each of these puzzle pieces represents an estrogen hormone molecule. Okay? This is estrogen, that's estrogen, and that's estrogen. Okay, so remember that once an estrogen binds and attaches itself to this molecule, it's going to become activated. And until it binds, it's just floating around here. These are doing nothing. They have no activity. So, in the last tutorial, I told you that estrogen molecules can differ in how strong they are. So we are going to arbitrarily say that each of these estrogen molecules has a strength of 100. Okay? Every, each of these is 100. Now, if one of these three molecules attaches to your body, to your human molecule, you now have an estrogen strength that's active of 100. If a second molecule comes along and attaches, you now have an estrogen strength that's active of 200. And if a third molecule of estrogen comes along and attaches, you now have a strength of 300. It's 1, 2, 300. Very simple math, right? It makes sense. If these three molecules bind, you've got 300 strength value points for estrogen. Now let's switch gears and do the same thing using a phytoestrogen molecule. So here you have another of these identical molecules in your body that is sitting around waiting for some estrogen to attach to it. And now you have three pieces of puzzle that are phytoestrogens, and each one of these is floating around looking for a place to attach so that it can be active. Now, we're going to arbitrarily give these phytoestrogens a strength of one because remember, I told you that. The estrogen in your body can be 100 to 1,000 times stronger than phytoestrogen. So we're going to say that this human estrogen is 100 times stronger than a phytoestrogen. And we're going to arbitrarily say our phytoestrogens have a strength of 1. So if one of these phytoestrogens with a strength of 1 attaches to our human molecule that has an estrogen receptor site on it, you have now an estrogen strength of 1. If a second one comes along and it attaches to a receptor site, you now have an estrogen strength of 2. And if a third one comes along and attaches to the receptor site, you have a strength total of 3. Simple math. You have total strength here is 1, 2, 3. It makes sense, right? Now, if you compare the three human estrogen molecules that attached to this this, molecule, this human molecule to the three phytoestrogen molecules that attach to this one, the total strength here is 300, and the total strength here is 3. That's a big difference. And remember, we arbitrarily said these are 100. They could be as high as 1,000. So you could have a difference that was much, much higher. These could be 3,000 and this could be 1. So your difference can be huge between the strength of estrogen in your body versus the strength of a phytoestrogen. And we, phar we pharmaceutical estrogens are of this strength. They're very high, 100 times to 1,000 times higher than phytoestrogen. 
Now this difference in the strengths of the estrogen molecules is huge in terms of the effect that estrogen has on your body. So pharmaceutical estrogen is about as strong as human estrogen. So when you take a pharma pharmaceutical estrogen, you're dealing with these strengths of about 100. It's virtually impossible for you to eat enough phytoestrogens to equal the effect that human or pharmaceutical estrogens have on your body. So that's what you need to understand when you hear this hype about phytoestrogens being dangerous, okay? Because phytoestrogens are weak, weak, weak estrogens, they're also gonna exert their effects much more slowly than any kind of pharmaceutical estrogen or bioidentical estrogen, synthetic estrogen. Pharm phytoestrogens are gonna be much slower. It can take a whole month, six weeks to notice any changes in your menopausal symptoms when you use these versus when you use a pharmaceutical or a bioidentical hormone. So as you can see, all estrogens are not created equal. Now that's a good thing because it gives you so many more options and the options have significant differences. And so if you're looking to have very low doses of estrogen, you can do that with phytoestrogens. If you're looking to have a stronger dose of estrogen, you can do that with pharmaceutical estrogens. So this is the simple basic math behind phytoestrogens. And I think we'll stop here today. I want you to think about what I've taught you and maybe watch this video again now that you have an idea of where we're going with this. And we'll use this information for the next tutorial. And next time we're going to discuss what determines whether this strong estrogen or this weak estrogen binds to the receptor. How do you know who gets the spot? Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>